Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, and welcome back to Sentinel Reviews. Our coverage of Agatha All Along continues with this review of Episode 4, If I Can't Reach You, Let My Song Teach You, written by, apologies for bu bu butchering this name, Giovanna Sarkis, Sarqui, Sarqui, Sarquis, uh, uh, again, apologies, and directed by Rachel Goldberg. As always, I am doing these unscripted, so I am putting a blatant spoiler warning in place in case I do decide to talk about spoilers. If you do not wish to be spoiled, Agatha All Along is available on Disney+. Plus. And right off the bat, right off the bat, overall thoughts, this is a fantastic episode. The quality so far of the episodes continue just to stack one on top of the other. Episode 2 was better than episode 1, episode 3 is better than episode 2, episode 4 is better than episode 3. So the plot continues to get better, and as these care as we grow to learn these characters, their dynamic also improves as well. There's a really great scene towards the end of the episode, where after the latest trial, the coven just sits down and talks and gets to know each other. So what is the plot of this episode? Well, picking up right where the last episode ended, after burying Sharon and sort of reeling from her death, some handling it better than others, the coven decides, even though Agatha is still determined to go along the witch's road, the coven decides they still need a green witch. And, dis and despite Agatha's objections, the witch they end up summoning to fill the role is Rio Vidal, Aubrey Plaza's character. And then, of course, they proceed to go on to the next trial on the road. The trial of this in this episode focuses on our protector witch, Alice. I'll stop for a moment right here and go on to talk about performances. The standouts of this episode are once again Catherine Hahn, as we continue to peel the layers back on Agatha Harkness. We get a little bit of her mysterious past with Aubrey Plaza. We see how her relationship with the teen has kind of changed and what she's kind of thinking. I want to stop there for a minute because um, the popular toy brand Funko Pops has started releasing Agatha All Along figures. And these figures have spoiled later developments in the series, including the identity of the team, as well as something pertaining to Rio Vidal. I was unfortunate enough to see these spoilers. Um, I will try not to bring them up until they happen in the series, but just know if you do not want to be spoiled, do not look up those pops. So anyway, we get a little bit of insight into Agatha and Rio's past relationship. Aubrey Plaza and Catherine Hahn have really great chemistry, and we get little hints about what led to their relationship. Like, Aubrey Plaza has this great monologue, you know, all of the witches are sharing their scars. And Aubrey's is, I was with someone, and I had to do my job, and my job got in the way. And that's all we get at this moment. But Aubrey Plaza and Catherine Hahn have great chemistry that really lets your mind fill in the gaps. The other standout of this episode is, of course, Alion as Alice, because the trial this episode focuses on her. We don't get much with Joe Locke, Sashir Zamata, or Patti Lapone, but it's fine because the episodes seem to know when and how to focus certain aspects of the episodes. And this episode continues to confirm a theory I might have about the way the series is going to go. Each trial on the witch's road is going to focus on a specific witch. So the first trial was catered to the potion witch, Jennifer Kale, Sashir Zamata. In this episode, the trial was aimed at Alice Wu Gulliver, Alion. So, again, Agatha All Along is a miniseries. It's only going to be nine episodes, if I remember right. So we still have Lilia has to do her trial, um, Rio has to do hers, and then Agatha hers. Again, remember, the teen is not officially part of the coven. He was not part of opening the doorway to the road. He just kind of hitched a ride. So I imagine the next three episodes are going to be those respective trials. That'll be episodes five, six, and seven. And then the final two episodes are going to circle back around to 
sort of the deal that was made at the beginning and the hint. Agatha and Rhea will have their fight and Agatha will face the other coven hunting her, the Salem Seven. That's just my prediction. I could very well be wrong. We'll see what happens. Anyway, we get a really strong focus on Alice in this episode, as I said. Also, I really like the 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 depiction of the trial in this episode. Like, in the last episode, it was this sort of Hampton-style, rich, socialite housewife type of vibe. Here, it's 70s rock. The, the costumer is clearly having fun with this series. The costumes look amazing. And one other thing I like about this episode, too, is that... You know, as they're exploring the room this trial is taking place in, it's fairly standard with very consistent direction. And then when the trial starts, the direction changes. Like, the style suddenly becomes so different. Like, we get a lot of split screens. There's a very 70s style to it. And I really like that pivot and that shift. It also really adds to the tension and the unease. We get, we get a little more into Alice's backstory, like, by writing this Ballad of the Witch's Road, Alice's mother basically made her audiences at her concerts her coven. And because of the popularity of her rewritten version of the Witch's Road, which we get here, which is also a good version, I debate whether or not I like this or the Sacred Tr Chant version more, um, as long as the song is playing or as long as someone is singing it. Alice is protected. Now, we now that is kind of a weak point, I will say, of this episode. We learn that Alice is the victim of a generational curse, combined with the hallucination of the previous episode. In that hallucination, Alice's mother said her grandmother died. Um, this is presumably a flashback. Um, the curse is coming for her, and she couldn't protect her. And then we kind of, as they're playing the Ballad of the Witch's Road, which is apparently all this curse, all this trial needed to do. Um, and this is getting into my point. We see the depiction of the curse as kind of this winged demon. And somehow Alice playing the curse, playing the song, is able to vanquish it and presumably undo it. And I'm going to be honest... Um, given just the traje trajectory of this series, that seems kind of half-baked. Like, it feels like the specifics of Alice's curse weren't entirely laid out. Like, who cursed her? Who cursed her family? Why were they cursed? Um, what you know? And as Lilia says, the only way to stop a curse like this is to confront it head on, and that's essentially what Alice does. But it's just. The, the logistics of everything, I say logistics, talking about a fantasy series, the logistics of everything surrounding specifically Alice and her curse, it feels like that idea wasn't entirely fleshed out. And I don't know if we're going to get any more information because it seems like, you know, we get some sort of resolution from these trials and move on to the next. And that, and I do like the ending of the series, I have to admit, as well. You know, I, it, at the start, I talked about that great campfire scene where Lilia, Alice, Jennifer, and Rio all kind of bond, talking about their experiences, the scars they got. Because during the events of the trial, the teen was injured, and Agatha freaks out. Like, it is becoming abundantly clear, uh, just based on the information we got again in the last episode... She believes, or at the very least, she speculates the teen might be her son. So when she sees the state the teen is in, you know, her sarcastic, quippy veneer melts away and she shows genuine concern. You know, showing more of the person Agatha used to be before the Darkhold corrupted her. I don't have much more to say. I just, I really liked episode four overall. It's... The trial was really fun. I love the highly stylized direction and editing of the episode. And we got really good performances, again, from Katherine Hahn. We, Aubrey Plaza was a lot of fun. And Allion was the standout. But those are just my thoughts. Have you seen episode four? What are yours? Start a conversation in the comments below. And remember to like, comment, subscribe. 
Click the bell next to subscribe to get notifications when I upload. And in the description box below, you'll find the link to my socials where you can follow me and get updates on the channel. This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, and I'll see you guys next time.